Hi, I'm Will. And I'm Luke. And this is Will, Will and Luke, Luke Discuss. A vodcast. And podcast. Where we discuss content related to psychology, personal growth, self-development, and well-being. This, this episode, episode, we're discussing... Don't Sweat the Small Stuff, and It's All Small Stuff, by Richard Carlson. I was just looking at his wiki yeah. bio here. So this book was written in 1997. It was a bestseller for two years. <laughs> in the uh new york times bestseller list yeah and I, um he was a psychotherapist motivational speaker he worked in stress reduction and unfortunately died at age 45 in 2006 on a from a embolism on an airplane so that is the book and who we're talking about and um this book it's i want to i want to describe it without going into it because it's it's a hundred what would you say tips techniques uh bits of wisdom and they're about a paragraph or two long and they're not collated into any sort of chapters it's just like 100 tidbits and um it's more like little nuggets of inspiration rather than any narrative isn't it yeah yeah it's not kind of like into into chapters or anything like that or separate into different sections although you probably could separate a lot of the um the lessons into their own chapters um, mm. i guess it's kind of a yeah just a hundred bangers of classic <laughs> advice that i <laughs> yeah I, I think the thing i found interesting about it was that it um uh they kind of a lot of the things he's saying are kind of like mm -hmm. general advice that you kind of hear throughout your life about you know how to live your life and ways of you know, viewing things and viewing difficult situations or how to bring more peace into your life. But I guess he's kind of elaborated on a lot of them and I guess bulked them up a little bit, but I think there's probably a better explanation than the one I just gave, but um, I think it's kind of, there's a, there's a lot of different lessons in there. 100. Yeah. <laughs> and yeah. like you say, they're really distilled and they're not like, I didn't read the book and come out thinking like I've learned something new. Everything felt familiar it, it it came from somewhere else that you would have picked up somewhere or other before because sometimes we read things it's like this is brand new information it's state-of-the-art research whatever this was just like yeah i i know this really i should do this but i probably don't and he's he's written it in a way that's quite inspiring that makes you want to yeah. <laughs> smile at strangers and that that's important or get up early or, or whatever it is it's things <laughs> that yeah it's common sense written in a really inspirational way <laughs> yeah yeah and I, I was interested like just kind of about what is inspiration behind it or was you know he is it's almost like he's talking about very in some ways like quite idealistic ideas you know ways of ways of living that can sound that can sound quite cliche but i guess the way he writes them it doesn't sound too cliche in the way it, it comes across as is quite heartfelt and genuine and yeah. you know kind of all all with the purpose of kind of bringing us more peace more ease more relaxation, more love into our yeah. lives. It's quite a, it's quite a wholesome read. Although I wouldn't say it's a particularly like academic or challenging read. No. It's a, it's kind of light, but it also carries a lot of depth in its <laughs> message too. <laughs> nice. I'd say, yeah, nice. yeah, yeah. <laughs> that sounded um... cliche. <laughs> oh, oh, yeah, oh. yeah. <laughs> far too far too profound than what you probably intended. <laughs> <laughs> um, so in his, in his intro, he says, I want to share with you very specific strategies that will help you respond to life more gracefully. Um, so yeah, it's, it's, I think most of the lessons are around the theme of like, when we're in everyday situations, we can really lose perspective. We can feel like life is an emergency. Little things stress us out. And actually when you come out of that perspective and think about, the grand span of life that actually most things aren't that big a deal and like there are perhaps practices or or just little perspective shifts we can use every day to um, remind us of that and to build that habit of not getting like lost into this idea that mm. we're constantly living in, in a state of emergency and we've got to clear our inbox and that you know there are things that are more important than that mm. He says, um, he starts off the book with a, like a William James quote, doesn't he? He said, the greatest discovery in my generation is that the human being can alter his life by altering his attitude. 
he says that we, you know we've got we've gotten into certain habits of you know reacting to adversity that don't serve us well and we we overreact um we hold too tightly we blow things out of proportion and yeah. that we get like immobilized by these small things is what he calls you know small stuff i suppose and the, i guess the, the first rule he says you know is like we uh, don't sweat the small stuff rule number one uh, i don't know if they're rules or lessons i don't know what to call them but uh yeah, so he says like we focus on little problems and blow them out of proportion. Try and um, and he basically says like we need to learn how not to worry about mm. little things. We spend too much energy sweating the small stuff that we lose touch with the magic and beauty of life. Yeah, yeah, yeah. He yeah he calls them strategies. I think strategies. But okay, yeah, yeah. We can go run with that. But yeah, they're kind of like rules, aren't they? It did have a hint of. 12 rules for life about it but much more i suppose condensed and 100 <laughs> rather than 12 yeah, yeah. <laughs> but yeah there, there's yeah. lots of stuff that's kind of rooted in i suppose buddhism cbt stoicism as yeah. much like recognizing that your thoughts are just thoughts that they, you, they can grab hold of you and and you know wipe the floor of your emotions and that by noticing thoughts and changing your perspective or distancing yourself from them so yeah in that mm. theme like you say there's don't sweat the small stuff uh, strategy 16 will this matter a year from now strategy 21 imagine yourself at your own funeral <laughs> chip 22 yeah, yeah, quite stoic, life isn't yeah. an emergency yeah so <laughs> i mean obviously we're not going to go through all 100 but there's like there's a theme isn't there that's kind of overarching through all of it so, um, yeah and i, I think um is i suppose it's quite difficult to know exactly where to start you know there's obviously some ones that like stand out but i think in terms of a book, it's it's interesting to think which ones you you take away. Because I, I came into this book, I suppose, um, just wanting to pick out the gold around stuff around you know overthinking, worrying, um, you know, anxious feelings and sort of thing. I guess it's just one thing I was kind of interested on, yeah, uh, interested in working on. And um, I suppose I kind of came in with that sort of angle on it. Um, but there was other other things obviously that stood out, particularly him telling us to wake up at three or four in the morning, which I found. <laughs> absolutely absurd yeah 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 was it like wake up at three in the morning have your coffee yoga meditation read write do nothing enjoy the sunrise enjoy the quiet oh. time of day before everyone wakes up i feel like i've had a full day of enjoyment no matter how busy i am that's my time <laughs> what popped into it. my head <laughs> That that inspired me to write like a spoof self help book, a self help that was so ridiculous that no one could possibly manage it. Like, <laughs> yeah, becoming early. Bef I usually get up between three and four in the morning. <laughs> like, <what? laughs> if you said four four thirty or five, I might be oh, like, okay. I'd still that's still ridiculous. Come on, like three in the morning. <laughs> oh, when do you go to bed? Seven. Yeah. <laughs> Oh, I, just, I, had to, I, I just do had, 700 sit-ups like yeah it's, it's, he didn't say about the sit-ups but yeah there's uh, I, I like yeah. how he just weaves that in as if it's no big deal as well <laughs> yeah yeah I think I think I needed to tell you that to get it off my chest mm -hmm. early because I was just waiting to talk about that specific yeah. instruction so I, I feel like now it's off my chest we can we can get into it I think um there's an interesting one I think he talks about you know watching the um like the snowball effect of your thoughts that I found was quite um quite intriguing yeah, you know, yeah. he's, he's talking about you know, talking about kind of you know nipping things early in the bud when it comes to your negative thinking which which kind of sounds um sounds slightly antithetical to some of the other books that I've read in the sense that they say kind of like acknowledge your negative thoughts let them come and go what he's often I think some of the message that's coming across, and please, correct me if I've maybe misinterpreted mm -hmm. this, some of it is saying is actually like challenge these negative thoughts and like actively kind of like put them to the side and like don't allow them to manifest themselves too much, you know, um, which I, I thought was interesting. You know, one of the rules, rule 67, like practice ignoring your negative thoughts, mm. you know, kind of like, and, you know, early on, like recognizing that it can't hurt, thought can't hurt you. We recognize that our mind is about to create a mental snowball and dismiss that thought. We have choice what thoughts to pay attention to. Um, try approach. Yeah. So I, I don't know. Just, I thought that was quite, a, I'm not sure. Like, I like the sound of that, but it felt different to some of the other um, things that I've read about thoughts. Um, yeah. That, I'm not yeah, sure what your thoughts are on that. Yeah. <laughs> well, in, in, 
acceptance and commitment therapy in which we did a book on the, the happiness trap which you know i mean it's largely just ripped from buddhism anyway but their idea is that you want to observe your thoughts as just as what they are they're just bits of mental words and Im Im imagery right they don't have to be serious or important or true or, or whatever and so it's it's kind of like learning to not struggle with them like not battle against them because the idea is when you put your fight or flight mechanism against your inner life it it just creates a positive feedback loop and makes things worse so if you try to push thoughts away for example and fight against them it's like your anxiety will just increase and yeah it, it was a little i mm. suppose ambiguous whether he meant kind of like <laughs> but ignore like push them away and just don't but but when he says like pay less attention to them and don't take them so seriously, I I can also frame that through the like just see them for what they are and crack on with your day kind of thing. So yeah, I, I wasn't too sure either how yeah, to interpret that's, that one. That's what we yeah, I feel like I've just picked on the most ambiguous one. <laughs> but, uh, I think um that's uh I think you know think about when we read the happiness trap. He's talking about um you know working out whether thoughts are you know helpful or unhelpful or whether yeah. they move us. Um, towards the life that we want to live and I think this is just a I guess it kind of summarizes that in a sense you know we do have um a choice like which which thoughts we pay attention to and I think he he quite strongly says in quite a number of rules here you know saying like you know rule nine, uh strat 92 um <laughs> realize the <laughs> realize the power of your own thoughts yeah. so he's saying like there's an importance of knowing the relationship between my thinking and how I feel and he says like unhappiness accompanies negative negative thinking so without negative thoughts we can't become unhappy stressed or jealous that's what he says yeah it's, i guess yeah. it's kind of uh it's got me thinking a bit about like when you get stuck in those kind of negative moods or negative thought spirals that the the maybe like physical manifestation of that can can be like a low mood frustration irritability um confusion like it, it can it can start to feel quite global when actually it's just a, a thought. Um, mm -hmm. I guess that's that's quite, um, yeah. I'd say consistent throughout a lot of his, a lot of the strategies. And he's talking about you know how to transform your relationship with these thoughts and being mm -hmm. aware of the snowballing of your thinking, and then to a deeper level, like listening to your feelings because they're trying to tell you something. So like paying very close attention to your thoughts and the signals in your body that are telling you that something's not quite right what you just say in there kind of captures the heart of like cognitive therapy and stoicism stoicism that like our thoughts uh our, a lot of our feelings or he, maybe even all of our feelings he's claiming stem from our thoughts and and he kind of captures it really nicely by saying like try to feel stressed out without giving yourself stressful thoughts or try to make yourself feel sad without having sad thoughts it's like mm a little experiment to realize how much your thoughts do affect how you feel. And then I think you went on to say mm. then that although it's another kind of contradiction, or maybe it's just a different, different level, but although some stuff is worth ignoring, like also listen to your inner life because it's trying to tell you something. Um, mm. So I think that, what was that like? Uh, I've, I don't know. Oh, the, the strategy 77 acknowledge the totality of your being <laughs> so it's important mm. to to accept all aspects of yourself so like this kind of goes hand in hand with the tara brack um acceptance book we covered but it's like on the one hand listen to your thoughts and ignore them <laughs> and on the other mm. hand like listen to all your being because it all has something to tell you so yeah, it's an yeah. interesting contradiction there as well well i don't know mm. if it is a contradiction but what um what bits kind of stood out to you? Is there like a certain collection of them that you thought was quite interesting, or like a theme you identified that that captured you, or you came into the book with a certain thing wanting to discover? Like what what's what's kind of prominent for you? I think the the main theme, like we were just saying, is this like take a uh, a more broader try to have yourself take a more broader perspective on life when you're stuck in the like daily stresses so i sort of expected that i suppose one that i liked which um stood out for me was was stuff around 
when being in relationship with people like you talked a lot of, about like i suppose gossip and and like interrupting people and like not mm. looking at people in the street and just those little things where like if you can really build the habit of just sort of smiling and acknowledging to people actually listening to them and not like not folk uh, recognizing we all have this tendency to really want to be right and sometimes we put that ahead of happiness or or the actual relationship we have with the person we're talking to like sometimes if they get a a thing wrong it just doesn't really matter like it might not be the point of what we're talking about so just to like mm. pull people out or to force your opinion in there without having listened to theirs first uh, that that stuff also uh i didn't necessarily expect it and i found that quite like refreshing mm -hmm. there's there's one in there something about um you know except let the other person be right like even yeah. if you feel like you need to kind of like argue back or <laughs> you know like yeah. just kind of allow someone to be correct or like hear out their full opinion before you kind of fight back with yours um hmm there's I, um, one on that theme go, go. there's yeah. one on that theme that was like also yeah, we tend to not listen to like when it went in terms of ourselves we tend to not listen to the opinions of those closest to us when actually they're the people that know us the most like if there's anyone that's going to know your quirks and the shit you probably need to work on and your blind spots it's like yeah. your partner <laughs> your best friends your family and they're the people we tend to not want to hear any of that shit from <laughs> so um he yeah, talked yeah. About, you know <laughs> like ask the people you're closest to you know what what are my blind spots like you, you have this golden information this like close but outside version of me and and tell me more about it i, I want to know like how you see me mm -hmm. what you think like uh if if you want if you had to have something for me like how would you want me to i don't know grow or something like and and listen to that feedback I'm gonna go get yourself a 360 review at work. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, no, I no, it's, it's a really um interesting point. I, I think uh, there's especially people who've known you through multiple transitional phases in your life as well, like people who've kind of seen you um, kind of grow into who you are today and kind of uh, shed some of the old versions of yourself as well. I think they're quite interesting people to talk to. Or well, I was reflecting on my partner the other day about how like. Um, you know, best best friends and people who've known you for a long time, mm. like have seen you go through all these various changes, and you know they they understand you so so well. I think it just kind of adds adds weight to what you're saying. Like it'd be, mm. it'd be a really cool thing to be a bit more open to and um to actively seek feedback from people around mm. you rather mm. than kind of uh, rejecting any feedback. Yeah, and I suppose if you solicit it, you're probably more likely to listen to it, right? Rather, like people tend to give you feedback <laughs> during the moments where you're most like vulnerable when you're like having an argument or disagreeing about something and that's probably the mm. time you're least likely to take it on board <laughs> yeah yeah, yeah. It's quite funny <laughs> nice well um i guess i'm trying to think uh oh there's another one i quite enjoyed um uh the ones i've kind of put them in the same category ones around um choosing your battles wisely um and if someone throws you the ball don't have to catch it uh yeah i like that that was quite that was quite an interesting one what, what were your thoughts on on one of the, one of those two maybe the the ball catch it one. well that second one yeah if if someone throws you a ball you don't have to catch it it was so i i sort of categorized all these hundred strategies into different themes because a lot of them were sort of similar or repetitive and that's the only one i put in its own category and it, it seems to be around setting boundaries okay. like setting because a lot of it is about love and kindness and compassion to other people which can end up feeling like a bit like well what about <laughs> what about me and all this like where at where at what point do i look after myself kind of thing and mm. this was one where it's like yeah if someone like calls you up you, you don't have to for example you don't have to take the call or, or if you're in the middle of a project you don't even have to have your phone on like you you can set boundaries to like uh not let people in because when you i suppose 
end up doing things for other people begrudgingly or out of a state of I have to or duty, then uh, you get less, you probably both get less pleasure from it anyway. Whereas if you have firmer boundaries, then when you actually choose to give and you choose to um, help, then it's much more right, rewarding and coming from a better place. Mm. I think it's um it's kind of yeah what he says about like knowing what's yours and what's theirs and like the limits you have and I think it's important um yeah something I guess I've learned um you know, important to like be clear when you you have capacity to like listen to somebody or hold their distress or also being clear with the other person like what they want in that situation like are they looking for advice or are they looking for someone to vent to right, um, yeah yeah you know I think I think that's that might kind of come into that as well it's like oh you can you can participate in someone else's um i know it depends it doesn't necessarily have to be distress it can be anything yeah, yeah. Like it can be participate in somebody else's life but also like you can set the terms in which you will engage and yeah or you can request from them the specifics of how they want you to engage as well yeah 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 that reminds me of mm. uh in the seven habits of highly effective people he talked about like when people come to you in distress talking at you about complaining about some things like they either want uh help or to be listened to and it's quite important to get that clear because <laughs> if they want to be heard and you try and give them help that'd be really annoying for them and if they want help and you just like you're just there to listen that will also be quite annoying to them so yeah that's yeah exactly reminded yeah. me of that <laughs> yeah yeah mm. Um, there was some. There was a few things in there around, you know, kind of making peace with imperfection, mm. um, being flexible with your plans, um, kind of being grateful whether things are good or bad, um, and kind of like redefining what we mean by like success and accomplishment. Um, and I guess it's red. I suppose like a relatively, um, I guess Buddhist idea around like yeah. attachments to things. And he talks a bit about you know kind of external. Um, motivation versus internal motivation when you're really asking yourself what's important yeah um kind of questioning like the bigger picture stuff you know your your higher horizon your horizon six stuff um <laughs> around like um you know what is the bigger picture um you know values and standards you want to live by yeah and kind of holding them against your your day to day i think that's been a common theme of what we've spoken about a, a few kind of programs and books we do they often sometimes yeah. talk about like the daily integrative habits and um practices but versus your kind of wider life mission and purpose yeah i guess yeah. it's kind of asking you to hold that wider life purpose kind of as your perspective when it comes to dealing with the small stuff yeah yeah said. yeah, yeah. Mm. so we talked about defining achievements right and like we would tend to celebrate things like getting a new car or a new house or a raise and we wouldn't necessarily celebrate the things that are probably actually our, our higher values and that maybe they're just harder to measure because it's easy to quantify getting a raise it happens at one point in time but like like if you'd become i don't know a more patient or compassionate person over time like and if that's your higher value then surely that's more worthy of celebration and recognizing as an achievement mm -hmm. than is the amount of money you're earning but we would tend to celebrate mm. the more material successes more um i don't know how we'd go about celebrating those more spiritual achievements but <laughs> but it's it's a nice mm. thought experiment at least i think there was a lot in there that kind of um reminded me of mindset oh, yeah. um or the, the last page of mindset yeah. Where, like, talking a bit about like um, <laughs> a bit about like how like you know kind of we, we can approach um actually he, he loved this actually i reckon there was loads of like strats on this so it's like stuff around seeing your problems as like a chance to learn to grow yeah. to understand yourself better like yeah. reframing problems as you know um challenges or challenges and like you know positive things so kind of mm. like whether um you know it's kind of like a good or bad thing like seeing it with the same mindset like the chance to mm. extend yourself beyond who you are today i guess mm. and, um that was really really common i think um, yeah there was a, he quoted yeah. some buddhist prayer 
I'm going to butcher it, but it was something along the lines of like, may I receive enough problems that I can challenge my patience and spiritual growth because something mm. like that, like the idea yeah. that actually we sort of claim to want things to not have any problems, but, uh, but really mm. if we want to grow, then we, there's a way of seeing problems as a, as a, like a benefit to, in, in life as a, a chance to learn or a chance to, oh, here, here's a, a test. Here's something for me to overcome. And yeah. So mm. reframing problems, not as things to get out the way or, or annoyances, but as, um, I suppose why we're here, something to learn from. Mm. I think he says that's like a cause of us becoming like uptight and frustrated is when we kind of are expecting things to be a certain way, then they yeah. don't end up that way, you know, kind of, again, analyzing the gap between like where you are and where you want to be and getting frustrated that you're not quite there yet. And I yeah. suppose it's more around kind of um, learning to love things as they are. And I think it, it what's that um, quote, like Amor Fati, I think it might be from like a, a Stoic um, philosopher, like okay. kind of um, wishing for things to be, as they are, yeah. you know, like being content with things like as they come up, like not wishing for anything other than things to be how it is, as they will be, how yeah. they are. Yeah. 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 I think that's one of his rules like be comfortable with how it is. <laughs> I think it's, um, yeah. Yeah. That one, makes um, so much sense, right? one I wouldn't distressed mm. by, like, if we have a fantasy of expectation and then reality just doesn't live up to that. And then we get distressed. <laughs> that's like as a formula. That's a really bad way to, to live. Um, but we all do it. Like yeah, yeah, we, I, I th yeah. Go on. Yeah, what does he say? He says um, number two. You know, make peace with imperfection. So the need for perfection and desire, um, and for inner tranquility, conflict with each other. Mm. When we are zeroed in on what's wrong, it implies that we are dissatisfied and discontent. The very act of focusing on imperfection pulls us away from our goal of being kind and gentle. I loved his kind and gentle as the goal of everything. It was good. Yeah. Um, realizing that whilst there's a better way to do something, that doesn't mean you can't enjoy the moment and appreciate the way things already are. So I think that's kind of, you can accept things the way they are. And if, if need be, there might be a strategy of kind of like um, overcoming that hurdle, but accepting that you might not necessarily be able to change absolutely everything mm. yeah yeah i think that kind of goes to what you're saying you know if you're the one he says uh, rule three let go of that i let go of the idea that gentle lax people can't be super achievers so it's like when you're fearful yeah. frantic you like in this panic of like trying to change things and constantly be in motion and constantly like trying to get all the hurdles out the way so you're in this final spot where everything's okay yeah you know <laughs> what, what does he say like people people die with their inbox full or something or nobody died <laughs> yeah nobody dies yeah. with their inbox empty at least yeah yeah yeah, yeah. so I, I think that that when he's saying you know it's kind of um you you know that we, we don't have to do things so frantically and actually when we do relax and we do kind of lean back a little bit we tend to actually be a bit more productive um which i've certainly found i can certainly advocate for that the times oh, yeah sometimes i have like a day off where i set myself zero expectation to get anything done and then I end up getting like twice as much done as if I had like a massive list of things <laughs> yeah. I needed to do. <laughs> it's, it's kind of fascinating. Especially really with anything. Works, yeah. I, I find that especially with anything that's in any way like cognitively challenging. So if I'm stressed, I, yeah, I might get some admin done and I might hoover up and clear out the bins and do some more mindless things and get that side of the stuff done. But if I wanted to like, read this book or like yeah make notes on a book or prepare for teaching or like do anything that require like anything that's actually the enjoyable things i like if you're in a state of stress that's just far more difficult and yeah get far less done mm. i think that's kind of a, a key message in his book isn't it really it's like actually you'll, you'll live a more productive fulfilling happy life if you kind of relax a bit yes. <laughs> like what wasn't out. one of his rules like <laughs> relax i think yeah. just like relax i love that that was so good um one what i just wanted to quick oh, you lighten go, yeah. up <laughs> yeah i was good lighten up that was decent yeah, yeah. Well, uh, actually that one wasn't too bad i wouldn't mind yeah let's jump into that one actually there was another one i want to cover but it can wait to the end like okay. the lighten up one kind of fell in this um category i kind of made of 
something reminded me we me and you what listened to this um talk by alan watts about being sincere yeah. not serious and yeah. treating life as play yeah and i think there was a few that fell into this so like yeah. lighten up is you know saying the you know if we get stuck in these small things we can lose perspective entirely he says like the root of our uptightness is our unwillingness to accept life being different from our expectations our limited perspective our hopes and fears become our measure of life and when circumstances don't fit our ideas they become our difficulties and i think that's that makes me think about how you know kind of approaching everything with lightness and like you can be sincere about you know addressing the uh, obstacles and issues that come out in your way you know you can yeah. have a desire for um you know to live your best life and to reduce suffering and all that sort of thing but also not getting so wound up in your problems that they become the center of your life and you get just sucked into this vortex of just mm. battling through issues and obstacles whereas you know some some of our problems are actually quite like funny and ridiculous when you actually yeah. take a step back i think that's something we get from each other when we have phone calls about you know maybe difficulties or things we're struggling with is actually sometimes we can end up just laughing about the yeah the absurdity of some of the some of the situations we kind of end up in you know and the stresses we we have yeah, definitely. And yeah, like just to echo that, just because something's important and you want to do a good job doesn't mean you have to be really serious. I, I think like that just gets hammered into us at school mm. that like you have to kind of have a straight face and be serious mm. when you're doing something you consider important. But there's no reason why you can't like still play and be sincere mm. and do a decent job and have fun along the way. I think that's sort of the point, mm. isn't it? Yeah, and I, th I think we, I mean, you know, I hope for everyone, but I hope we, we all kind of know that spot where we're, you know, we're, we're either like working really hard or we're, um, we're striving towards something, but because we're kind of maybe we're carrying a lightness with us or we've kind of, um, you know, we're not taking the situation too seriously. It's a lot more enjoyable to do challenging things. And I think that's where, that's a really great spot to be in, isn't it? When you're kind of like, oh, this is really hard. I'm finding this really difficult, but like got a smile on my face and I'm mm. giving it a good go, you know, as mm. opposed to kind of like, oh, this thing's so difficult and it's pissing mm. me off and I just mm. want to get it done. So I can get it done. Then you just move on to the next thing. Like it, it, it can sound quite exhausting to live a life where you're constantly serious about absolutely everything. And then I guess that would lead into a lot of kind of like the stoic um, strategies he yeah. says, you know, around kind of like imagine yourself in a hundred years time. Will this really matter? Yeah. Um, you know get get perspective so you kind of realize that this thing you're worrying about won't no, no one's going to care no one will remember you yeah. in a thousand <laughs> years time or whatever you know all that sort of stuff one of yeah. the strategies is like remember in a hundred years all new people <laughs> yeah nice. so, so it's like in a hundred years well perhaps there'll be one or two of us left but basically yeah. everyone will be just different like everyone that's mm. alive now will be dead and everyone that will be alive will all be new people and it's yeah just another one of those perspective shifting attitudes I just want to um there's there's two i wanted to touch on yeah. um and then i guess if there's any kind of you know final ones you wanted to bring up or things that stood out to you i suppose i just want to really quickly touch again on the becoming an early riser one yeah i'm um, okay. just like in, in terms of thinking about like how how shifting our routines can help us you know kind of live a lighter life and gain more perspective i think there's something in there about kind of you know installing some structure can give you like how, how routine can make you feel secure about yourself and accountable yeah. to yourself and responsible for yourself and sticking mm -hmm. to the things you know to be good for you and giving yourself space for yourself, whether that's a you know a morning routine or a nighttime ritual, like really seeing the importance of like cultivating, whether it's like self-love or cultivating some intentions for the day, cultivating space for gratitude. You know, those are things that that makes me so as much as like becoming an early riser and him telling us to get up at 3 a.m. is kind of sounds a bit silly. Like I've found for myself, like recently I've been getting up at like 5.15 and yeah. that means I can go to the gym, come back home, meditate, um, you know, mm -hmm. do, do my like meal prep for the day and then mm -hmm. on the walk down to the journaling, like 
without that kind of accountability to myself and that structure, I actually don't think I would have as much perspective going into my day. Like yeah. I'm kind of doing all these things that are like good for me. Um, so I guess I, I would agree essentially that like, yeah, if, if it means getting up like half an hour earlier, so you find ways of cultivating active or whatever gets in you. I lost the end of you there, but I, I think I got the larger point. And he, he, it, it reminded me of a story he told about like, you know, as someone who was getting up just in time so they could like say eat to get to work or just in time so they could get the kids ready to go to school. And it, it's reminds me of that. It's just like the first habit of the seven habits, which is just like be proactive and it, um, it might not have been the first one, one of them. And, um, it was, it's like, I suppose it's another boundary issue really, isn't it? It's like when you set a structure that's for you, it's not at the whims of society or your kids or your job or like other pressures external that are put on you, but you're choosing to make a structure for your priorities. And yeah, I, th mm -hmm. I think that can, I can really relate to that, giving me a sense of like autonomy and and a sense of, I suppose, control and accountability of my own life in, in, in like a, in a positive sense that I feel more like, yeah, yes, there's lots of chaos outside of me, but within me, I can carve out a space that's, mm. um, that's of my own doing. Mm. And also, I guess, you know, maybe to extend that is sort of in, in showing to yourself that you can be accountable to a schedule and that you will do things you know to be good for you means that when it comes to making decisions later in the day, you might trust yourself more or you know that kind of what you're doing is in your best interest, like you're in a more centred spot yeah. to respond to kind of the chaos that comes in. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So like when you've practised that and something comes your way and, and you're uh held to account in a more chaotic fashion that yeah there's a bit more mm. self-trust there perhaps one final rule i wanted to touch on um yeah. was uh, yeah was it oh my god this is awful okay um yeah, so we go um remember you become what you practice most yeah. so i like this one so it says if you have the habit of continually being uptight anxious or worried in certain situations or snowball in emergencies, this is because we have practiced this being so. And he says, this is vice mm. versa with positive responses. So it goes like, gets you to ask like, where is my attention? Where do I spend my time? Am I cultivating habits useful to my goals? Um, for once change overthinking, um, practice not doing so. Um, so he's kind of saying like, is your, are your behaviors reflecting the, the way you want to live so if you mm. want to become like a less like anxious or worried person mm -hmm. or a stressed person or whatever it is for you um mm. you kind of need to practice in those small day-to-day -day moments not to kind of yeah get carried away with your thoughts and not sort of um cultivate neurotic reactions to mm. daily situations i think it kind of stood out to me thinking like actually it is it is something to be to be practiced you know i guess like i have my frustrations and my worries and all those sorts of things and it's kind of interesting to think about like on a day-to-day -day sense like when yeah. i when those arise like almost kind of like um james clear's um yeah. habits you know he says around like uh you know casting a vote for the person you want to be yeah you know like every time i re i choose to react differently or not pay attention to um a certain thought or feeling or whatever it is um I'm cultivating a more positive way, like more in yeah. line with the person I want to be. Um, yeah. I guess that's sort of, yeah, without kind of saying ignore your thoughts or dismiss anything or push anything down, it's like, well, you can learn to react or respond um, in a more meaningful way to you, to those negative emotions. Yeah, yeah. It's kind of, yeah, yeah, yeah definitely the <laughs> James Clear Habits book stood out for me on that one as well. And there's kind of two, there's like choosing to practice stuff because you want to get better at it, to grow with it. And, but then 
the other side of that is what's the stuff you're accidentally practicing all the time that you didn't intend to, but it's kind of unconscious. And uh, I think this is pointing more towards that end of things, isn't it? Like be, be careful of the stuff you you're accidentally practicing all the time. Cause that's what you're yeah. becoming. Um, mm -hmm. So it's not just about choosing the things you want to practice and practicing them, but noticing the sort of quite bad habits you have um, mm -hmm. raising mm -hmm. awareness to those because uh, you're building a little, mental monster in your head each time it's kind of like an addiction <laughs> yeah. right each time you build on that habit it's growing and getting more powerful mm -hmm. or you, you can like you can end up becoming like a stressed person yeah or a worried or person, a bitter person or a, yeah like a sad <laughs> like exactly. you know it's sort of something you can yeah yeah and I, I don't think you know in some ways it's not um necessarily like fair to say that people who are in those states it's um necessarily all because of their choose there might be some you know kind of biological reasons why people are you know kind of wired to the way they are but in terms of kind of um what you can do to respond to your thoughts um that's certainly one way of looking at it yeah but you, yeah. i i can definitely think of people who let's say i associate with either complaining a lot or gossiping a lot but if if i were to bring that to their attention i imagine they would be surprised or taken aback or offended in mm. some way so there's there's something about raising awareness to those habits cuz yeah although you although you're <clears throat> you know it doesn't capture someone's identity to say that they they complain a lot <laughs> like it to to the outside world, it, you you can end up giving that impression, can't you? So, was there any any kind of uh, strategies or parts of the book that we didn't cover that you you liked? I'm, yeah, I'm feeling pretty, so I, pretty content. Yeah, give me give me a couple. Well, off liked. the back of that, I, I like this. Yeah. Uh, the ones around, um, I suppose, checking your ego and changing your perspective specifically in response to other people. So strategy 27, imagine the people in your life as tiny infants and 100 year adults. So like, I don't know, someone, mm -hmm. <clears throat> okay. I was in a, <laughs> I was donating some stuff to a charity shop the other day and there's a person in front of me in the queue arguing with the, the volunteer <laughs> at the, the cashier desk who wasn't, <laughs> who wasn't accepting this, this person returning an item because it was like, out of it was it was like months ago that she bought it and she was trying to return it and the thing was a few quid and in my head i'm thinking this uh, is a charity shop just donate the bloody thing back like <laughs> you why like why you <laughs> fight you're fighting yeah. to get money back from cancer research uk <laughs> and so like I'm, <laughs> I'm obviously stood there with my like box of stuff i'm donating judging this person but like <laughs> um i suppose that's an example where i can think okay like I don't know what this person's situation is. They they might be really strapped for cash or 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 they might have been, you know, really messed around with in a way that they really like, like things to be fair or, or something like I just don't know, right? And at the end of the day, yeah. once upon a time, this person was a, a tiny baby, completely innocent to the whims that the world was throwing at them. And one day, hopefully, this person will be you know, an elderly person on their deathbed reflecting mm. on life. And I think like that sort of perspective shift can just help you step back when you find yourself judging people um, yeah. as an example to sort of check yourself. And because what, who's, who I'm only adding to the suffering by feeling these judgmental thoughts and feelings, right? I don't need to, to go to that place. And so there are a couple of like seats, strategy 36, see the innocence, strategy 41 of what i like this one avoid weather yeah this is gonna be that yeah so weatherproofing means that you are on the careful yeah, nice, lookout I saw that one, yeah. <laughs> for what needs to be fixed or repaired so like rather than focusing on all the bad things in life and honing in on them you, by doing that you're missing out on i suppose what's going well and the nice things as well um and it probably would avoid kind of looking at yourself i kind of imagine mm. people I've, I've certainly i've certainly been in that situation where i've just kind of gone through like 
a period of time I've just kind of felt grumpy about everything or something you know it's a it's kind of often a reflection that you're probably not quite where you want to be or um you know it's like what asking yourself like why do I feel the need to be critical uh, to the mm. point where you're like pointing things out mm. yeah. There's another one, 43, become an anthropologist. So it's kind of like saying, you know, take this perspective of, of a curious observer, like looking at the human race rather than like really getting invested mm. in being annoyed that certain people are doing X, Y, or Z or certain politicians are making this decision. Like you can take a step back almost as if you were like looking at a different species or an alien race and mm. being like, oh, isn't it, isn't it curious <laughs> that people mm. respond in this way? Um, so like a growth mindset, isn't it really one of like curiosity and openness? He says like, open your heart, you know, <laughs> to, yeah, to like, yeah. Let, yeah. I think when we judge, we, we have too many assumptions that we can't possibly know for sure. Um, mm. And so there's, there's, yeah, and it, it doesn't do you any good and it feels much nicer not to be judgmental. So that or critical or whatever. So yeah, that a few of mm. these, uh, a whole, there was a whole theme of, I suppose, strategies around when you find yourself judging or being critical or point, like thinking about people's faults or <laughs> like strategy 97, mind your own business. <laughs> um, <laughs> Some of them are so blunt. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. So I like, I liked all those themes as well. That, that resonated with me. <laughs> All right, mate. I think uh, I think that might might be us. I reckon. I reckon we covered a fair bit there. It was nice to kind of see some of the connections um, between some of the different strategies, but also how some of them like clump together, and also like the background behind some of them, like a lot of like stoic ideas, mm. acceptance and commitment therapy, some kind of like CBT stuff in there too. Yeah. Um, Buddhist ideas, you know, around acceptance and uh, yeah, and also kind of links in a bit with you know some of the Tony Robbins stuff we did about you know looking at your bigger vision and your your um, values you want to live by and your code of conduct you want to live by and what's important in your life and what you place emphasis on and the perspective you carry around day to day when it comes to the small stuff. One thing I did just want to finish on. I don't yeah. know if this kind of I don't, I don't like pop a sour note on it, but I, I guess I was interested in like how um, you know in describing stuff as small stuff, yeah. your it kind of implies that you're you're sizing things up, right? So you, yeah. it means that you're sizing things and calling them smaller than they are to you. Mm -hmm. Like if something's, I guess what I wrote said, like if it matters, it matters. <laughs> and then for like, does that mean that like sizing's a, a bad thing? I suppose it's kind of like some of these things for some people might feel really core and really important. Mm -hmm. um, but to him, he's calling it small stuff. Right, um, right, right. I'm just putting I'm putting that out there. I no, haven't fully point. formulated it, but yeah, like who's to say it's small to someone? Yeah, it's all small stuff. Like then, <laughs> then you're saying this. What this matters. is big stuff. <laughs> yeah, yeah, perspective, perspective, and like what matters is important, but everything else is small. And I guess like that that might not be like a bad philosophy. It it, it could well be very very important. But I guess it's just interesting to think about. <laughs> like, yeah. is he sizing uh, things up? Like, yeah. if I were to like play devil's advocate to that and try to cast it in the best light, I would say that yeah. it, it's kind of like, well, whatever your priorities are, like, think about that. And I suppose size things up relative to your personal values. Like, he suggests some, mm. like, you know, love and gratitude and kindness. And and he might be assuming that we have those as our higher values as well. Mm. But mm. you could argue that, uh, yeah, that when you look back at the end of the day at the stuff you felt was a big deal, do you now see it as a big deal relative to your personal values, whatever they might be? And then that's small yes, stuff yeah. to you <laughs> rather than I'm telling you that yes, you're yeah. so small. <laughs> That's, that's yeah, the, yeah, kind, okay, yeah, the yeah. kindest way I would get around that, I think. Yeah, yeah. And also kind of saying, I think it's an interesting point you make, like at the end of the day was what you're experiencing at the time specifically mm. that felt so big, mm -hmm. as big as it was in the moment. I mm. think that's probably something I'd, I'd throw in there as well. Mm, right, yeah, mm. yeah, yeah, yeah. Cool. Yeah, yeah, I suppose, yeah, if if... A week 
a month, a year from that point, you look back and you're like, no, that was a really significant in my moment in my life. And that, that was relatively speaking big for me, then fair enough. Right. <laughs> so maybe it's not, all, <laughs> yeah. it's not all small stuff. <laughs> yeah, maybe is that, is that going to be our final line? <laughs> <laughs> Don't sweat the small it, stuff. Can... And it's mostly small stuff. <laughs> it's mostly small stuff. Right? That's, that's a great <laughs> that's a great way to end it oh my god okay cool cool right awesome great to great to chat again mate um always enjoy i think uh that was a nice one nice one to do i feel like, yeah i mean lifted i think and, and motivated yeah some nice some nice little life reminders just to kind of yeah give you a little kick along the way i, I think yeah. i really liked it i i i had some hesitations in that i knew it was a very famous book and that it was seen as like you know very cheesy and pop psych and, and whatever and it is it's like it's a little nugget and it is quite cheesy, but, and I didn't, I think we both agreed we didn't learn new ideas, but as something to have on your bedside table to sort of pick you up, inspire you and remind you of like what's important. I think it's great. I think it serves its purpose really nicely. Mm. All right. See you in, uh, Maybe Sometime three weeks in the future. For the next one, yeah, three weeks <laughs> yeah. for the next one. I haven't, I haven't decided the next book yet, but we're, we're trying to do roughly one a month, if not, if not more, if we can manage it. But um, yeah, keep uh, keep yeah, keep on keeping on, mate. Yeah, yeah. We'll see you next time. Don't sweat yeah. the small stuff. It's mostly small stuff. <laughs> <laughs> see you, mate. Much love. Bye. See you, mate.